Hey, what's up, peoples? How you doing this fine day? I'm Hardleg Joe, here today with the profile for my Magical Musket Control deck. For our monster lineup, we have one Satan, one Rambo, one Raven, three Starfire, three Mortys, three Ricks, three Friendly Ghosts, and three Archfiend Eccentric? For spells, we have three Easy Wind Buttons, one Goblin Blowjob, one Magical Space Tycoon, three Called by the Hand Trap, two Favor House Atlantic, and three Bang Bang You're Dead. For our traps, we have three Thump. Card destruction. One DD Crow times three, one double summon on crack, one anti Rygeki barrier, and three of Dark Bribe's rowdy neighbor. Our extra deck contains one Lightning McQueen, one Steve McQueen, one Sleepy Boy, one Not So Magical Musketeer, a Nightmare Shark, a Broken Sword, MST on Fins. Boral, Boral, Corn, Phoenix, Nightmare Cerberus, a Hippie Star, and two Magical Musketeer Man. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So for the most part, this is a fairly standard Magical Musket deck. If you're unfamiliar with how they work, it's pretty simple. You have your Musketeers, which are your monsters, and you have your bullets, which are your spell traps. You can only use a bullet if you have a Musketeer on the field to shoot it, but you can activate them from your hand during either player's turn. The bullets themselves are all hard once per turns, with fairly simple but effective effects. Steady Freddy lets you double a musketeer's attack for the turn, but it can't attack directly. Cross Dominatrix lets you negate a monster's effects and reduce its stats to zero. Death Parado lets you destroy a face-up card. Dancing Queen banishes three cards in the graveyard. Underrated Crown lets you special summon a musketeer from your hand. Fiendish Dish makes your musketeers immune to destruction via card effects. And Enemy Stand negates a spell trap. In addition to these, all your musketeers have hard once per turn effects that trigger when a spell trap is activated in the same column as them. Doesn't have to be one of the archetypal spell traps, doesn't even have to be you activating the card, just as long as a green or pink card is activated in front of or behind them, they do a thing. Specifically, Casper adds a magical musket from deck to hand, What's Up Doc adds a magical musket from grave to hand, Brave Kid lets you discard a musket to draw two. Starfire summons a musketeer from the deck in defense. Cammy summons a musketeer from the graveyard in defense. And Wild Thing lets you shuffle three magical muskets in the graveyard back into the deck so that you can draw a card. The only main deck exception to this is Zack Kyle over here. His effect is you can tribute summon him using just one musketeer, which is nice, and during your opponent's end phase, draw cards equal to the number of magical musket spell traps you activated this turn. This guy is somewhat of a controversial choice since he is the devil, and also he can be kind of bricky, but if you get him out on the field, you pretty much just win, which is really nice. And also you can summon him off of Max, the new Magical Musket Link. This is a Link 1, which means you can make it with any individual Magical Musket. And when it's summoned, you can either add Magical Musket spell traps from your deck to your hand, equal to the number of monsters your opponent controls, or summon Magical Musket monsters from the deck, equal to the number of spell traps your opponent controls. So yeah, this thing is kind of insane. It's the reason why we play Called by the Grave at 3, because if you can get this effect off without being hand-trapped, you can usually search and or summon, like, three cards from the deck, which is pretty broken in just about any deck, but specifically in this one, where the spell traps are all really powerful and the monsters can loop for infinite advantage. Uh, like, if you didn't realize it, Casper plus Doc with a bullet in hand is like a one-way trip to Advantage City. You activate a spell under Casper, getting rid of an opponent's resource while searching another bullet. Then you activate that new bullet under Doc to not only remove another thing, but get that first one you used back to your hand so you can use it again next turn. And then, you know, if you happen to have Zachiel on top of that, you get to draw at least two during the end phase, so it's just like, fuck man, shit. I feel bad playing this deck sometimes. It could just be brutal when you've got them stuck in this loop and there's nothing they can do. 
but yeah, there's the basics of the deck. Pretty much everything else in here is just kind of a tech card. Some of them are magical musket staples, upstart goblin for instance, great way to draw through your deck while triggering a musketeer's effect. Ties of the Brethren, also key. It's pretty much the best first turn play you can make. It lets you turn any of your level 3 monsters into the Casper-Doc combo I was talking about while triggering one of your Musketeer effects in the process. Very nice. As for my more spicy techs, Archfiend Eccentric, actually really good in this deck. It's a level 3 Light Fiend, so it can be used as a target for Ties of the Brethren, get you out both Caps and Doc. And it's got some decent removal as well. If you summon it as a monster, you can tribute it to destroy another monster. If you play it in the Pendulum Zone as a spell, you can tribute it to destroy a spell or trap. Either one. Regardless, the monster removal is decent in a pinch, but mostly, you're just going to be using it for spell trap removal. Not only is it a nice way to get rid of those pesky solemn judgments, which are a big thorn in our side, but since it's technically a spell in the Pendulum Zone, you can use it to trigger one of your Musketeer effects on the first turn, if need be. MST serves kind of the same role. Spell trap heavy decks are really popular in YGO Pro right now, and this old school spell is probably the best way to deal with them. You're playing a pure advantage game with this deck, so you really don't want to discard for Twin Twisters. Uh, Galaxy Cyclone can't be used on your opponent's turn, Heavy Storm Duster can't be used well on your turn, and Cosmic Cyclone, while a decent second place, costs life points that oftentimes we can't spare, given that Ties of the Brethren already takes 2k, and our deck has really low attack monsters in general. I'm only playing one in the main deck, but if you're going up against a mine deck or something, there's two more in the side that you can put in. Likewise on the side, we've got extra copies of the less useful magical musket spell traps. Dancing Needle can be brutal against some decks that use the graveyard and useless against others. Same thing with Steady Hands, put in more or less as needed. Raigeki and Monstery Born, also good if you just have some musket cards you want to get rid of. Utopia Double adds another Garnet into this deck in exchange for a little bit more competitive edge. Let you OTK if you can get two level 4s on board, which is not that hard with Maximum Link over here. Dark Necro Fear, similar principle, but instead of being a Bricky Garnet that makes the deck more competitive, it's a Bricky Garnet that makes the deck more goofy. If your friends hate you for playing Musketeers and you want to give them a shot, put some of these in to make the deck weaker, but more fun. Speaking of which, World Legacy Awakens, kind of a neat car, I'm a little uncertain about it though. It's a neat tech that allows you to make max in the middle of your opponent's combos and search a bunch of stuff. People on stream said it would be really useful, I feel like it's a bit slow. Could make the deck better, could make it worse, hard to say, hard to leg. Uh, finally in here we have Pot of Desires, most builds I saw of Musketeers run this at 3, and while it is a really good card in this deck, I'm running too many one-ofs to risk it. In particular, Crooked Crown and Zack Black over here, both seriously underrated, I feel like. They can be bricks in hand, but getting them in the right time can turn this slow advantage deck into maximum overdrive real quick. And the fact that you can search them off of Mighty Max makes them worth the risk, in my opinion. Because I wanted to show off the potential of these cards, I didn't want to risk banishing them off of Desires. But if you disagree, if you think these aren't that good, it's not too hard to sub the one-ofs out for Desires to make the deck more consistent. All that leaves then is the extra deck, which is really just a toolbox that I rarely go into. Max is mandatory, you'll probably want at least two, as well as a hip hosh to boost all your low attack light monsters. But everything else in here is just filler. If you play this yourself, feel free to conclude whatever you want, man. And that's the deck. I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to see Magical Musket Control in action, you can check out the main video. There I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro, showing off how this thing works. Or if you're short on time, just check out the replay video. Both should be on the end card and linked down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun.